Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the solution class. So, in the face to face uh, lecture, actually, we have uh, started this uh, chapter, which is uh, a little bit long, but uh, it's easy to understand. There are uh, many parts, sections of it that you have already seen before. So, uh, the chapter is about uh, wireless, remote and wide area network. It, it uh, discusses how you can uh, have your Wi-Fi uh, network, which is wireless network, and uh, how actually you plan for LAN configuration, how you make the remote access. Okay, so it has a very interesting uh, part regarding the cloud computing, the LAN configuration, and Wi-Fi and wireless uh, communications in general, how you can deal with them. So, uh, um, as we have said in the face-to-face uh, -face lecture, that uh, the wireless LANs are widely used now, and uh, they are everywhere because most of the laptops actually now connects to wireless LAN, which is a, a trend that no one can deny now. So uh, whenever there is a laptop, there is a, a, a mobile phone, all of these connect through the wireless LANs. And the most important protocol here is the uh, AT800 uh, 2.11. Okay, this is the most important protocol that defines how uh, the wireless uh, through the internet can be. Uh, it has uh, protocols for defining how the data goes in a wireless way. Uh, and it has versions, as you know, A, B, uh, N, G. So, uh, in order to have your your uh, network, actually, you need equipment, as you know. You need the network adapter, which is uh, has to be attached in your... Uh, it's, uh, usually now, it's built in in your mobile phone or it's built in in the laptop. For the PCs, uh, some PCs has this uh, uh, as uh, integrated in the motherboard. Some of them uh, have it on uh, as a card, like the NIC card, also the wireless uh, adapter. And uh, it depends on your need. For the PCs, not all PCs, they have access point adapter. The other thing is that you need one or more the wireless access points, or what we call WAPs, okay? Uh, WAPs. So you just need the uh, your network adapter along with the wireless access points, uh, and uh, then you need to specify on the frequency. Okay, as we said in the lecture, there are two types of frequency range, and uh, they come with disadvantages. They they there are the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz range, okay? And the, 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 the choice between them depends on the, the bandwidth you want for the 5 gigahertz. It has wider bandwidth than 2.4, of course. But 2.4 uh, also is good in terms of uh, less attenuation. Attenuation means the lose of signal after uh, uh, when signal travels for a long time, sometimes become weak. So this is called attenuation. So uh, actually for the Wi-Fi and also the other topologies, the physical topologies, they uh, uh, use uh, similar topologies. Uh, um, similar to the Ethernet. So uh, uh, you can use the physical star, logical bus, 
uh, when you are, for example, using the infrastructure mode. Uh, so uh, there is a, is it a question, Omar, or I couldn't get you. So uh, that's how you use the uh, Wi-Fi. And w what is required to know here is that uh, you have to know uh, the kind of protocol that works. We have the CSMACA, uh, which works in two approaches, either distributed coordination function, DCF, or VCSM. Okay? So uh, these are the protocols uh, using Wi-Fi when you use the CSMACA. Uh, also the standards for this protocol 802.11, uh, they come in A, version A, version B, version G, and N. Okay, so A is is uh, very old and it's not actually practically in use now. B uh, came after and G now is the current standard and N is actually develop, being developed for a very high speed uh, and it is in, in the drafting process uh, in the IEEE. This is the organization which uh, produce these uh, uh, standards. So in, in, uh, when you are configuring a wide uh, wireless LAN using Wi-Fi, you configure the access point and also each of the wireless devices. Each access point presents a basic service set, multiple access points constitute an extended service set, and the specific procedure for configuring uh, a WAP are um, manufacturer's uh, model um, specific typically configuration option include uh, the internet connection information and local network information, uh, wireless uh, recording started. Wireless configuration and uh, wireless security network security. Okay, so uh, we actually we stopped at. Uh, uh, when we are using the remote access. So let's uh, resume from uh, comparing access and authentication. So a remote access protocol manages the connection between a remote computer and a remote access server. So uh, the, uh, the primary uh, remote access protocol in use as today are the serial uh, line internet protocol or point-to-point -point protocol and point-to-point uh, uh, -point over Ethernet, or we call it uh, PPPOE, and point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. Also... Uh, and uh, the layer 2 tunneling protocol, L2PT. Uh, uh, the authentication protocol option depends on the client server and network operating system and remote access server type can be handled by individual server, by the remote access server, can be centralized using RADIS, which is a uh, RADIS is a, uh, a system for uh, uh, authentication that is used. Here is a conversion, uh, uh, conversion between the uh, SLIB and BB. So this uh, the protocol used in the remote access. So uh, the SLIB developed for Unix, transports TCB IB over serial connections, uh, does not error checking or bucket addressing does not support encrypted password and connection requires a SLIB account and host machine and batch file screen workstation. Many modern OS 
does uh, don't support inbound SLIB connections. And there is also the triple P which implements uh, the TCB IB connections over point to point link. It encapsulates packets protocols, uh, has the error checking. It can run over many types of physical media and uh, most commonly used for remote connections to ISPs and LANs. Uh, high overhead, not compatible with some other configuration, easy to configure, and has almost completely replaced uh, SLIB. So now the triple B, which is the one in use uh, in a state of the SLIB. Now we compare between the two uh, protocols, PPTP and L2PT. Uh, PPTP is the Microsoft created protocol based on the uh, trouble B to create virtual connection across the internet, uh, tunnel through an existing uh, trouble B connection to connect a secure session, and it can encrypt the data. Now, actually, this is used for uh, uh, secure connection to connect uh, in the virtual private networks by using tunnels in which uh, these tunnels are uh, uh, routes for data, but they are encryption. Uh, there is encryption that protect this data from being uh, discovered. Uh, L2TP is the combination of uh, the Microsoft PPTB and Cisco Layer 2 forwarding technology. It's an industry standard supporting TCB and not TCB IB protocol. Can authenticate user clients using certificates or pre shared key. Supports stronger authentication methods than the other one. Not compatible with some NAT devices. Uh, tunneling can reduce throughput, provides encryption authentication through Internet Protocol Security or IPsec. So here, uh, the, uh, the L2TB provides the security for uh, VPNs using the IPsec protocol, which works uh, at the, uh, in the tra transport mode, data portion packet is encrypted for host-to-host -host communication. In the tunnel mode, entire packet is encrypted and encapsulated in another packet for host-to-host -host or host-to-network a network to network communication. Okay, so it comes with the two tunnels, either transport, uh, two modes, either transport mode or tunnel mode. Uh, so we come to the authentication, understanding authentication protocol. Authentication protocol can be used with uh, the two protocol, B or PBTB. Uh, such as password authentication protocol, Shiva password authentication protocol, challenge handshake authentication protocol, and uh, Microsoft challenge handshake also uh, authentication protocol. These protocols actually, they make sure that the user uh, who, who you want to communicate with is, is, is known and he is uh, part of the system by you will provide the password and username and then this protocol will verify that uh, you are uh, authenticated to get into this system. Uh, EAB and MS CHAP version 2 are preferred option. Uh, implement additional centralized support for authentication by including radio servers. Radio server sometimes is a boot also uh, in addition to this, uh, which is a de facto standard for support, authentication, authorization, and logging for remote connections. For configuring remote access, uh, actually specific requirements vary by the type of operating systems, but the parameters, so this is similar 
to the configuration of the access point, for example. The parameters are similar, but it varies depending on the type of uh, the device, the networking device. So, for example, in Windows 2008, I uh, use uh, the routing and remote access server uh, for uh, VBN identify network interfaces and identify how clients are issued IP addresses, either by the DHCP or by the R uh, RAS server. Uh, set the authentication method and then configure client connection either as dial up VBN or both. You can see here the available network interfaces in which uh, these are the configuration you see uh, in Windows. These are the RAS server pro properties. RS security tab, which you can specify the options here. Okay. So this is the authentication modes and the advanced security settings. Either logging using extended authentication protocol or uh, whether you want to allow these protocols that I have mentioned or not. These are all, we, all about uh, settings and how you configure. Joining uh, LANs into ONES, a LAN become a ONE when traffic between the network process through a public uh, carrier. Consider variables when planning a one, number of LANs you need to connect, geographical uh, location of the LANs, number of computer in each LAN, implementation budget, network operating system, network servers and services, and bandwidth requirements. This is what we think about when we want to join some LANs into one one. Okay. And here you see the internet VBN. Uh, you can make uh, a VBN using the internet, make it into a one. So uh, here we have a LAN and there is an office in another city, for example, uh, connected in OA. So we can connect all of them and uh, forming uh, 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 VBN1, okay, a private network, but it's one using the tunneling uh, uh, by uh, VBN, in which this is the tunnel in which the data will be encrypted. Here, the data is being encrypted either in two modes, yeah, by using IPsec. Yeah, that's right. So IPsec can, can encrypt the data, uh, actually end-to-end -end encryption, or they, uh, it can be on the tunnel mode, which encrypts the whole communication. or also SSL, Secure Circuit uh, Layer. So you can tell me, uh, Nasser, what's the difference between uh, SSL and I, I, IPsec? Actually, the difference only lie in the uh, layer. So the SSL works in the near the application layer, but the IPsec uh, is an implementation uh, that can be uh, very low at the network layer, okay? So uh, planning LAN configuration and one connection, uh, planning LAN configuration, decide on the client computer placement and decide on the server placement, okay? Uh, you consider the type, full-time or part-time connection, balance cost and support, and then planning the one connection uh, supported by wide variety of connection types. Uh, technically, a VBN connection and not a setup. Connection can be made over one of three network types, either circuit 
uh, switch network or dedicated circuit network or sw bucket switch network. Okay. And then uh, connecting with the circuit switch network, uh, each has uh, uh, has its parameters, advantage, disadvantage. Either you can connect with the circuit switch network or dedicated circuit networks. Okay, so for the uh, circuit switch network, uh, they are all just the simplest approach to man and one circuit. They actually operate uh, in the telephone network. The telephone network is called circuit switch network. Um, circuit switch service use cloud architecture, user lease connection points such as telephone line into the common carrier network, which is also the cloud. Uh, Cloud-based design are simple because they move network design and management to the carrier. Uh, by, uh, but they can be more expensive. There are two types of uh, services, either POTS or ISDN. Uh, ISDN includes the basic rate interface, primary rate interface, and the broadband uh, ISDN. The main problem, which is here the important thing to uh, remember, about circuit switch network is connect, connection go through regular phone network on different circuits. Data transmission rates on the circuits are usually uh, low. Uh, can be expensive if services are provided on a pay per use basis. So here the problem is that there could be expensive service. If the pay per use is a business model, in which you, you, you pay according to the amount of usage you, you make, okay? Which is uh, found in the telecom sector in which uh, uh, when you use uh, the internet, okay? Or uh, when you make a call, actually, uh, the, you, you will be charged depending on the duration the duration of the cup. So this is called pay-per-use uh, business model. Uh, here you see the connection in the circuit switch network. Now l l let's go to the dedicated circuit network in which you will be dedicated uh, uh, the route, not like the... Uh, so dedicated circuit network, they are, circuits are leased from common carriers at a flat rate, and they uh, run through carrier cloud, but the network behaves as if you have your own physical circuit. So you would rent the circuit, all of it, it becomes like it, if it was yours. A uh, user then installs equipment needed to connect computers and devices to the circuit, including the multiplexers, and, uh, or a channel service units uh, use a combination of three architectures, ring, the star, and mesh, and provide two types of servers uh, on, or services, the T carrier circuits are the most commonly uh, used form, uh, and also the synchronous optical network or SONET, uh, are the ANSI uh, standard high-speed dedicated circuit servers. You see this is how it looks like with the dedicated circuit services. These are the characteristics, which uh, the speed, designation, and the carrier designation, uh, the services of SUNET or SDH. These are different uh, t types with varying speeds. Uh, 
Yeah, you told me that you don't have these slides. I'm providing it. I am promise you that immediately after the lecture, okay, you will find it in your uh, account. Uh, connecting with Beckett Switch Networks. Uh, uh, the Beckett Switch Network, they use uh, use a pay fixed fee for the connection into the network and start uh, for the number of packets transmitted. Uh, a packet assembly, the assembly device, which is called BAD, provides a connection into the network. Types of services, X.25, asynchronous transfer mode, frame relay, switches, multimega uh, bit uh, data service, and uh, the multi-protocol label switching to use labels to route communication appropriately, improves the quality of service and movement of packet with the layer two protocols. So uh, these are the types of uh, packet switch services. Uh, you see this is a conversion between uh, the four of them, X.25, frame relay, uh, synchronous transfer mode and switches, uh, multi-megabit data service. So this is a conversion between the two uh, X.25 and ATM, which this is here the source, destination, and you see how uh, the network works in the direction of the traffic. So you have to choose the uh, connection type. It depends on the connection requirement, data rate supported and cost involved. Uh, also, the service support from third parties and the maturity of the technology. Uh, here, this uh, figure compares the wide area connection services uh, in general. You can see uh, regarding the nominal data rates, uh, the effective data rates, uh, cost, reliability, and network integration. So you can see it's here compared to the Ethernet, uh, SUNET, okay? And uh, here the one connection recommendation uh, it, according to the uh, network needs there is a recommendation for use for example for the very high traffic needs uh, Ethernet if available and uh, Sonet if network volume is stable and predictable otherwise you use ATM so these recommendations uh, to help you design the one and to choose the right uh, protocol for it. Then uh, we talk about accessing a wireless network, a uh, device that can be used to access wireless network like a smartphone, as I pointed in the beginning of the lecture, uh, cell phones with the same computing capabilities, as you know, BlackBerry, iPhone, Android, tablets also. These are the recommended uh, devices that uh, they usually have no option uh, uh, to get into a network in another way. There should be only a wireless connection, like tablets also coming from many vendors. And the, the last thing in this chapter is about cloud computing. So cloud computing, uh, in it, it provides uh, everything as a service in which uh, organization purchases service from server provider that has a large network of hardware capabilities to provide services to clients. It allows access to services without the expense of acquiring and maintaining a large infrastructure. So. The main uh, 
benefit of using cloud computing is that when uh, uh, renting the infrastructure is more cheaper than buying them, okay? When you don't want to buy servers and when you don't want to buy storage, you don't have the budget to uh, keep all of this running with the IT department and technical support. All these are costs. Sometimes you might be provided with all these services uh, with a lower cost. So here you can consider the cloud computing in general. Uh, the type of services provided, such as the software as, as a service, uh, development services, utility services, commerce services. Uh, yeah, it, it can provide you with uh, infrastructure, hardware, software, without you having this. Uh, so uh, for the front end, we mean by the from the client side, they must have access to the network containing the cloud, some kind of client hardware, appropriate software to access the cloud service. For the back end, it includes the server storage devices, and these devices covered by server uh, service providers. You just need to have the front end, which is the machines only, that will let you to get into the uh, uh, into the cloud. And there is also the middleware is responsible for allow communication between the system with interaction between the front and back end. Okay, so uh, this is all about this chapter. And I'm, I'm going now to upload it for you in the Blackboard. Okay, so do, do you have any questions before the end of the lecture? Okay, then thank you uh, for attending. See you, inshallah, next week. Goodbye. Recording stopped.